Good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. Jyoti Patel. Welcome. Welcome to my Facebook Live. Um, so for those of you who don't know me, I practice internal medicine and pediatrics and integrative medicine uh, here in Fountain Hills, Arizona. And so good morning, Karen. So today's topic, um, you know, I'm starting a segment called The Middle Road, which is where Eastern and Western medicine meet. Um, as I continue to do my education and uh, continue on, I want to do more functional medicine. So I'm going to space out my talks to once a month. Um, and so if you have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to put where you're from and uh, what your topics of concern are so that I can do my Facebook Lives um, and meet your needs. My intention is to educate, so hopefully you'll get something out of this today. Uh, don't hesitate to put your name and where you're from and tag anyone else who might benefit from this talk today. Today's topic, good morning Claire, today's topic is on the adrenals. So I'm going to talk about um, stress, fatigue, and the adrenals. Specifically, I'm gonna focus on adaptogens. People have heard of that term. These are natural uh, herbs, roots, and mushrooms that work to help lower uh, cholesterol. Um, excuse me, lower uh, stress, cortisol. So, um, okay, why is this topic so important? Everyone experiences stress. It's normal to experience stress. Stress is what drives us. Stress is what makes us who we are. But when that stress becomes dysfunctional, when we have excessive amounts of stress in our lives, it causes our systems to break down. It causes disease, illness. So how do we become more resilient to stress is what I'm gonna talk about today. Most people know that you can take prescription medications, anxiety medications like benzodiazepines, Valium, um, Ativan, or you can take antidepressants. Um, which are sometimes needed. So here I am here to say that if you suffer from severe stress, anxiety, and depression, please seek care with your doctor. Uh, this is not a replacement for your medical care. This is an adjunct to what your doctor and you can talk about and things that you can do to take back control of your health, okay? So if you have any questions during this talk, don't hesitate to ask questions, okay? So to help you understand um, how stress works in the body, I'm gonna take you through an analogy. Okay, so I'm gonna sp speak on a topic that I have no clue about, which is cars, um, as my husband cringes. So imagine that your body is a race car, okay, or a sports car, and your brain is the driver of this car. Now, you have two pedals. You have the gas pedal and you have the brake. Okay, I got that in a car, so hopefully you're following along. So you have the brain that's a driver, you have the gas pedal, which is your sympathetic nervous system, so it travels down to your system. As you push the gas, your body moves forward, it goes. So your sympathetic nervous system triggers the adrenal glands, which is the gas tank, to release gas, which is norepinephrine, epinephrine, cortisol, things that get your engine going, right? So when you are in go mode, you're fearful, you're angry, uh, you're excited, your brain, your driver, sends a signal down the sympathetic pathway, which is your gas pedal, to tell your adrenal glands to go, okay? This is a good thing. Now, on the other side, you have the brake pedal, that's your parasympathetic pathway through that vagus nerve. It's to slow you down. It's to make sure you don't go off the road, make sure you don't hit anyone. So our life is always in balance. You're always going and you're slowing down. If everything works perfectly, then your life is, is great. Now what happens to a lot of us is that we are on go mode all the time. We have deadlines, we have work. Um, we have kids, we have family, we have spouses, we have aging parents, we have uh, demanding bosses. These things kind of tax our system, put us into that go mode all the time, okay? So now as you're in your sports car, which is beautiful by the way, you are on a racetrack. And as you're pushing that gas pedal, you've got baggage. You've got things that are holding you back. So what do race car drivers do? They take out the passenger seat. They take out the back seat, right? They try to unload that spare tire. So what does your brain do? It also tries to conserve energy when you're pressing on the gas pedal. It basically shuts down your gastrointestinal tract. Why? Because it's a gas guzzler. 
Digestion is unnecessary when you're being chased by a lion, so let's shut that off. So what happens is when you're under stress, you have acid reflux. Things don't digest well. You have indigestion. You have gas, you have bloating, you have constipation, you have diarrhea. You wonder why you have these GI symptoms? Think stress, think adrenals, think gas pedal, okay? So your brain is basically bypassing your GI tract, no need to digest, so you have chronic abdominal symptoms, okay? What's another system that gets affected when you're in high stress mode? Your immune system. Okay, so you're, you're driving this race car down this track at 120, 200 miles per hour. You have to get going. You have things to do. You can't be bothered with fighting infections and spending energy in the immune system. So people that are chronically stressed get colds. They get coughs. They have chronic UTIs. Um, they have autoimmune conditions because, again, your immune system is dependent on energy, and it's, it's whacked when you are under a lot of stress. So... Just remember though, those two systems are big. Now, what's another system that your car tosses out the window? The fertility system, okay? So women and men, you know, low testosterone, low estrogen, low progesterone, uh, young women with polycystic ovarian syndrome and infertility, hormonal fluxes, menopause, things that are just not really well balanced when we're stressed is because the, the system has decided not to put any energy towards fertility, reproduction, hormonal balance. So we chase after all these hormones, but the root cause of it sometimes can be that underlying stress. Good morning to everyone that just joined me. I see you. So, okay, so now we've got the gastrointestinal tract. We've got the, you know, the immune system that fails us. We have reproduction and hormonal systems that are failing. The other thing that happens is you're now driving down this racetrack. Do you really need your GPS? Do you really need your car's computer for lane assist and uh, auto driving? No. So what happens is your brain shuts down, your cortex, your cognitive thinking, your higher functioning, so memory, mood, focus, attention, memory, all gets flushed out the window. Claire shares with us this morning after her miscarriage, she found out that she had thyroid issues due to stress. Absolutely, Claire. And I did a video on thyroid, but this also ties into that adrenal stress crisis. When your brain is in crisis mode and it's just trying to make it to the next day and you're firing cortisol and norepinephrine and epinephrine and you have either underlying physiologic stress, meaning you're ill or you have infections or you have external stresses like financial crisis or marital stress or work stress or things that we just put on ourselves. That taxes the car, that taxes the system. The brain basically makes a, uh, you know, an executive decision to shut down energy to our hormonal axis, our thyroid, right, our metabolic function, we start gaining weight shuts down energy to our fertility organs. We, don't, we can't reproduce. Um, it shuts down our immune system. We get sick. It decreases the blood flow to our gastrointestinal tract so we can't digest very well. So I hope that all makes sense, guys. You know, give me some thumbs or some hearts. Let me know that this makes sense. Your, your brain is basically dictating where energy gets directed. And when you have these symptoms and you go to your doctor and you say, I have heartburn or I have, um, you know, issues with weight gain or I'm tired and I'm not focusing or I have memory issues, spin back a little bit and see what's been going on in your life. Is there any underlying stressors that might be playing a role here? And how is that playing um, a part in your illness, okay? So what happens is you're now driving this car just night and day, right? You're at the end of your day, you're exhausted, you're tired, you're wired, um, and, and you can't rest. And what's happening is, again, you're, you're on empty. Now imagine you've got your fancy little sports car, right? And you've been driving all day long, burning gas, burning rubber, now your gas tank is on empty. How many of you feel like you can get a few more miles out of your car before you go to the gas station, right? You're running on fumes. So we do that too, we run on fumes. 
Now, we can't be bothered to go get that high octane gas, right? It's just too far away. So we just stop at the side of the road, we see a trash can, we rummage through it, we find some trash, we open up our trash tank, I mean our gas tank, and put the trash in our gas tank. And we expect our sports car to run like it did before, right? So we, dial, we put ourselves through that same process. We give ourselves coffee and cupcakes and sugar to kind of keep us going because we just can't be bothered. We can't stop. So we don't nourish our bodies properly. And that also is part of this chain of, you know, highs and lows. So a lot of this kind of stress adrenal crisis that we talk about can be mitigated through stopping and nourishing our body properly. Okay. Um, so one of the things that Sandy shares with us this morning is she says uh, she suffers. Adrenal fatigue is tough to deal with. Too much stress, too much pain. Absolutely, Sandy, I am here for you. I want you to know that you are indeed in crisis mode when your body is super stressed and, and pain and stress are sisters. They work together uh, to make somebody feel really um, unhealthy, okay? So now you've got this car that you're driving down the road at 120 miles per hour. You've just loaded your fuel tank with the most non-nutritious fuel. Now you're running, your gas is on empty, right? You feel tired. You're having pain. You're fatigued. You can't get out of bed. You can't think. Your gastrointestinal tract is a mess. You're sick all the time. So if this sounds familiar to you or you can share this with someone who might, who might benefit from it, we're going to talk a little bit about how to put the brakes on. So remember I said that you have a gas pedal and you have a brake? Most people forget that they have a brake. And when you hit the brakes, then your body can actually regroup and regenerate. Now there's a lot of studies to show that children who undergo very stressful environments when they're young, their gas pedal is super sensitive. They go from zero to 60 in a second, okay? They can be triggered very easily to uh, get into a stressful state. They have anxiety, they have trouble focusing, they may have behavioral disorders, they may have insomnia. So sometimes when you have stress that sets you up early on, um, that can really kind of be a problem. Uh, Phil says he thinks he needs a new automobile. I know, right? So here's the good thing. The great thing about your sports car, Phil, is that it self-regenerates if you take good care of it, okay? If you let things go too far, then you know, you're running your car out, you're, you're basically gonna cause your car to start to decay, you're gonna start to get sick, you're gonna have illness, there's gonna be cancer, uh, there's aging, people manifest hair loss, things under stressful situations. So how do we restore our body? How do we restore our cars, right? So you've got a 1960s or 1970s or 1980s model, or maybe even a more, you know, um, more, you know, antique model. Hey, you can restore these models. Don't um, throw your car out. Restore them, okay? So here is what we're going to talk about: restoration. It goes without saying, and I say this every week: the pillars of health always stem from nutrition, exercise, sleep, and self-care. Okay. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time today on that because I talk about it every week, but I don't want to miss that point. If you're not eating minerals, you're not eating vitamins, you're not eating a good amino acids, you're not eating a nutrient dense diet, you are not going to restore your adrenals, you're not going to be free of pain, and you're not going to get where you need to be. So nutrition is basically the foundation of everything else, and then you know we'll talk about everything from there on. Okay. So now I'm gonna focus on adaptogens. How many of you have heard of adaptogens? Give me hearts or um, thumbs if you've heard of adaptogens, you know about them, but you don't know enough about them. Okay, good. So adaptogens are nature's valium. Okay, they are herbs, roots, and mushrooms that have been used for thousands of years in traditional Chinese medicine and Indian medicine to help people become more resilient to stress. Studies now show that these herbs, roots, and mushrooms work at the level of the brain, the hypothalamic pituitary axis, and at the level of the adrenals where cortisol plays a role to help decrease our response to stress. So some of these things actually block cortisol at the receptor level. 
So when you take these, they become, you become resilient. Here's what I want to tell you about adaptogens though. You can't run your car on adaptogens, okay? So it's not basically a free-for-all for you to run your engine night and day and then take an adaptogen to try to basically high perform. It's kind of like your coolant or your oil in your car. It helps get the engines working properly. Okay, so think of adaptogens as, as an aid or a tool to your lifestyle choices to help you become more resilient to stress. It helps lower the effects of cortisol, so your heart's not always pounding, so you're not having trouble sleeping. It basically elevates your energy so you can get up and go, you can have more stamina. They basically say adaptogens help with longevity, help with stamina and vitality, with immunity, so these herbs, roots, and, and um, mushrooms, they may seem like uh, magical, but they work physiologically in the body to help us be more resilient to stress. Okay, so I'm gonna take you through adaptogens through the organ systems that we talked about, the gastrointestinal system, the immune system, the brain and stress system, um, and also your fertility and um, you know, sex org organ systems, um, and then of course, you know, your metabolic or energy systems. GI, if you have heartburn, if you have indigestion, if you have reflux, there is a perfect adaptogen for you. It's called licorice root. Most of you guys like licorice, but I'm not talking about Twizzlers. I'm talking about real licorice root. Now, licorice root is an adaptogen that has multiple properties. It helps with vitality and immunity. It helps with upper respiratory infections, but it definitely helps with acid reflux. So if you have acid reflux and you don't wanna take prescription medications or over-the-counter uh, medications for it, try licorice root. But before taking any supplement, talk to your doctor, make sure it's not gonna interfere with any medications or any of your health conditions. I'm not prescribing this. I'm just making recommendations based on research. So licorice root, diglycerated licorice root can be found in a health food store in anywhere from 200 to 300 milligram chewable tablets. If you take two to three of those with your meals, it might help uh, settle some of that um, acidity that comes from stress, okay? So try that and see if that makes a difference. Licorice is a wonderful adaptogen, okay? And look it up. Now, three main rules when choosing any kind of adaptogen or getting any recommendations. One, Make sure that if you go to a functional medicine doctor, or an integrative doctor, that, that they are certified and educated. These days, there's a lot of people that will label themselves as integrative practitioners or functional practitioners that don't have any formal training. So make sure that if you're gonna put something in your body that you get it from a, um, an educated professional, just like you would if you were doing taxes, you would go to a tax accountant that actually studied uh, accounting. Um, okay, second. Make sure that if you buy any kind of adaptogens, you go to an organic certified company, okay? This is really, really important. If you buy adaptogens from any old company that is not organically certified, you might be getting heavy metals, you might be getting toxins, fillers, and binders, or you might not be even getting the real product, okay? Also, it might not be standardized to the amount that you need. There are standardized extracts that are really important so you get the right amounts, okay? There are tinctures, there are powders, there are capsules and tablets. They're all different and they're standardized differently. So make sure you go to a first, a knowledgeable practitioner who is trained. Second, make sure you get it from a certified organic company. And third, make sure you're not just taking an adaptogen because it says adaptogen on it. Every adaptogen has a different quality. They have different magic in them. Some of them are super relaxing. So if you're wired, then you wanna take the ones that make you relaxed. Some of them are very energizing. So if you find yourself really sluggish and slow, then these adaptogens might help you get up and go, give you stamina, give you strength, okay? But if you're already wired and you can't sleep, you probably don't wanna take something that's super stimulating. So make sure you talk to somebody about which adaptogen would be right for you, okay? So um, adaptogens are just general. They basically have different qualities, okay? So let's see, okay, I got off track. So we talked about the GI tract. The second is the immune system. How many of you have recurrent coughs and colds, upper respiratory infections, chronic congestion, 
or have infections, urinary tract infections, or anything else like that. There are adaptogens that can help build up immunity. One that's very common is called astralagus. So astralagus is used to help boost immunity. Here's the caution with, with astralagus. If you have an autoimmune condition, or you're on chemotherapy, or you're taking immunosuppressive drugs, you probably don't want to take astralagus because it might mess with your medical treatment. So again, always talk with your doctor. But if you tend to have a lot of coughs and colds, this might be something that you can um, benefit from. Another one that I love is holy basil. It is called tulsi in, uh, in India, and it's basically a plant that helps people that are nervous and have lots of upper respiratory infections. And tulsi is a leaf. You can get it as a dried leaf. You can take about an ounce of it, steep it in about eight ounces of water. You can cool it, drink four ounces every, you know, three times a day to help decrease your nervousness. So holy basil is something that is used a lot to help decrease um, anxiety, okay? It can help with that. It can also help with the immune system, um, especially with upper respiratory infections. It also is seen as a liver detoxifier. So a lot of times holy basil is a nice option for immune boosting. Now I love Dr. Weil's mushroom um, knowledge. And he talks about a couple of mushrooms that are also very good for the immune system. One is reishi. Reishi mushroom is also known as the mushroom of Im immortality. And the second one is cordyceps. It looks like a caterpillar. And these two mushrooms, when you put them in stews or soups or you use them as powders or tinctures, can help boost immunity. Um, he also says that adaptogens can help with vitality and um, help with longevity and can help with stamina. So, you know, these are things that have been studied. But again, there's not a lot of good studies when it comes to adaptogens just because it's not something that's profitable to the pharma companies. So getting valid studies can be difficult when it comes to natural herbs and, and roots, as you all may understand. Okay. So immunity. The third thing is, is stress like wired and tired, anxiety, insomnia. How many of you feel like that at the end of the day? You're so wired and tired, you just, you can't sleep. Your mind keeps racing. We talked about the monkey mind. So the one uh, adaptogen that I love for that is ashwagandha. Ashwagandha is, call, is, is translated to horse's smell. Now it doesn't smell like horse, but that's what it's called, okay? So ashwagandha actually helps with calming the mind. It's used for insomnia. It's used for uh, women that may be going through menopause or going through the change, um, having difficulty with settling down, um, stressed all the time. You know, ashwagandha is great for that. So, um, thanks Sherry. Um, so just know that that's, that's something that you can look up. Obviously, I don't recommend taking supplements without talking with your doctor, uh, but ashwagandha has a lot of research and a lot of studies behind it to support it as a decreaser of stress. Physiologically, it actually lowers cortisol levels. So this can be helpful if you're already super wired, okay? So the other things that I wanted to talk about, okay, memory. So the other thing that happens when you're stressed is cortisol shuts down the blood supply to your hippocampus. Your hippocampus is your memory center of your brain. So chronic stress actually causes atrophy, shrinking of the memory centers of your brain, okay? So this is really important, especially as we age, memory is an issue, but if you're chronically stressed, that can actually decrease your ability to have recall, to have short-term memory, to be able to be focused, to be efficient, to have the ability to complete tasks without mistakes. Um, so there's a couple of adaptogens when it comes to memory that I like. The first one is rhodiola. Now rhodiola was initially discovered by the Vikings and they used it for energy, vigor, and focus and attention. Okay, so it came from the Viking era. Rhodiola is a plant that you can get in tablet tincture form and it can help with focus, memory, attention, vitality. Another adaptogen that I like is Bacopa. Bacopa uh, Brahmi is a Indian herb and um, it actually has been studied um, to show that it helps with short-term recall, helps with focus and attention, and there is actually a small study done in school children to help them with test taking. 
So Bacopa um, is again another type of adaptogen that might help with memory, okay? Now, none of these medications or adaptogens um, should be taken without physician consultation. And there are certain populations that there aren't a lot of studies on, such as pregnant women and children. So just be very mindful and careful when, um, when recommending it for people that are you know, pregnant or younger people, uh, children, um, or people that are sick or taking other medications that they might interfere. So again, I would keep saying that because I wanna make sure people hear me on that. Okay, um, fertility. So we talked about how people that have high stress levels may have difficulty getting pregnant, they may have fertility issues, they may have menstrual irregularities, or menopausal women may experience more hot flashes, more night sweats, more mood changes when they're under stress. There are a couple of adaptogens that I like for hormonal problems. The first one is maca root. Maca root comes from Peru, and it's a Peruvian, um, uh, it's a Peruvian herb that helps with uh, sexual function. Um, it can help with desire. So some people will go with that. It also helps with hot flashes in women. So that's a nice one to look up. The second one is called Shantavari. Shantavari is translated to 100 roots or having 100 husbands. So kind of an interesting um, adaptogen, but it's to help women and men with issues that relate to hormones. So fertility, um, hot flashes, night sweats, menopausal symptoms, mood changes, Shantavari is a good um, herbal remedy or an adaptogen that might help, okay? The last category that I wanna get to is metabolic adaptogens. When you run out of gas, when your body is completely fatigued, then you find yourself needing energy. You find yourself needing something to give you vitality, to give you energy, stamina. If you're an athlete, you might wanna have some more energy to be able to perform better for muscles, for mitochondrial function. Okay, so here are the adaptogens that help with getting energy up. The first one is Panex ginseng, or Asian ginseng. It has been studied in lots of studies now to help see what it's actually doing, and it helps us balance and restore our body. It helps decrease our fight or flight, our stress response, so that we can perform better. You all can kind of relate. If you were ever in sports when you were younger and you had to go for your meet or a game, that fight or flight kicks in. And sometimes if you're too anxious, that may, maybe uh, affects your game. So things like um, Asian ginseng or Panax ginseng can help you balance your stress response so that you can perform better. There's also another one called American ginseng or ferro that's also used for the same purposes, to help with vitality, help with longevity, help with immunity, help with stamina. Um, so sometimes people will take um, American ginseng or Asian ginseng for that purpose, okay. Um, rhodiola works for that as well. That's the Viking one, um, helps with energy and stamina as well. The thing that's important about adaptogens, guys, is that don't take the same adaptogen over and over and over again. Your body doesn't need it to live on. It's not, it's gonna not live on coolant in your car. You still need to put gas in the car. You still need to work on nutrition and exercise and sleep and mind-body um, practices. What this is is just an aid to help you get through a tough time, okay? So you might wanna take it for six to eight weeks and then rotate your adaptogens. Try different ones. Try them in their real form. Try to get a dried root or a dried herb and put that into your meals or put that into soups uh, or put that into shakes. That way you're getting some good quality adaptogens throughout your body, okay, and throughout your life. Rotate them around. Maybe take a day off during the week to see if it's actually doing anything for you if you're trying to test that out. Um, and also always get them from reputable brands. So people will always ask me, do you know any good, reputable, organic um, herb places that I can purchase my um, adaptogens from. So I look, um, I look towards good educators like Dr. Lodog and Dr. Weil to see what types of um, companies they feel are more reputable. And here's some of their re examples. They like Herb Farm and Gaia Herbs. They like Maine Medicinals. And one that came up quite often was Tonic tinctures. 
Um, Dr. Lodog actually mentioned teas as a way to get your adaptogens, and the companies that she recommended were Numi Organic, N-U-M-I Organic Tea, and Organic India for the Holy Basil Tea. So um, those are the companies that I would suggest. Again, if anyone else has any uh, organically certified companies that they recommend, don't hesitate to put those in the comments. Uh, Karen has a really great question. She says, what's the difference between functional medicine and integrative medicine? Okay, so I explain it to my patients in this way. Integrative medicine is looking at the forest Good morning, Michelle. Thank you for joining me. So you're looking at the forest. When you're looking at health, you're looking at the person in the center of their universe. You wanna look at their nutrition. You wanna look at their exercise habits. You wanna look at their sleep. You wanna look at their social, their spiritual, their time for self, their history. You wanna look at their surroundings and you wanna incorporate that into their health plan. That's integrative medicine. You might use alternate practitioners like acupuncturists and massage therapists and maybe physical therapists or a counselor. You might help them with nutritional choices. You might send them to a nutritionist. So an integrative practitioner looks at the patient as a whole, not just an organ and a pill, but how does that whole puzzle fit together? I see myself as um, a medical investigator, a Sherlock Holmes, and I look at the patient as an individual and try to figure out where things went wrong and how we can create balance in their life using natural means and prescription when needed. A functional practitioner looks at the biochemistry. So if we had to look at the forest, functional medicine looks at the trees, right? So we're looking at how the cells perform. What nutrients specifically are you lacking? And that's the reason why your body is not functioning properly. Are you missing B vitamins? Are you missing omega-3s? Are you missing fiber? Are you missing a good bacteria in your colon? Do you suffer from infections? Are there metabolic problems at the, at the root level, at the cellular level that are causing you to not be balanced? And what can I do to help you find those problems and fix them first naturally if we can, and then with prescription medication if needed. So thank you for that great question, Karen. Um, so that's the difference between functional medicine, we look at the cells and we look at the details of the cells, or integrative medicine where we look at the forest and try to figure out where things went wrong, okay? Um, so to end our exercise today, I always like to do a mind-body exercise. And the one that helps with the sympathetic, parasympathetic, the gas and the break is something called Nadi Shodhana, or alternate nasal breathing. So first to be able to do this, you do have to have clear sinuses. So no one's watching, just go ahead and blow your nose. And join me if you like, okay? So sit upright, place your left hand on your lap if you can. I'm gonna place my tea down. Take your right hand and make a um, sign like this, okay? Place your thumb on your right nostril leaving your pinky or your ring and pinky, whichever one's more comfortable, for your left side. So you're gonna start by closing off your right and inhaling through your left. Then you're gonna block your left and you're gonna blow out through your right. Breathe in through your right. Block your right, breathe out to your left. Breathe in again. Block and breathe out. You can do this six or seven times. It helps balance the left and right brain, the female, the male, the sympathetic, the parasympathetic. It helps with communication, helps with relaxation. It helps downregulate that fight or flight response. So breath work connects us to that autonomic system that we've been talking about for the last 30 minutes. So work on breathing exercises like um, alternate nasal breathing to get yourself back in balance. All right, like, so next week, I'm actually doing a, a conference on inflammation and pain. I'm gonna try to share that video, but I won't be with you next Saturday. I'm gonna try to do lives once a, once a month so that we can um, get some information out there, share these videos, tell other people about them. Um, and if this has been helpful, let me know. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to add them into the comments. I'm happy to answer them later. You guys have a great day, um, and I'll catch up with you next time.